okay this is this one up here and this is the in between so uh, uh this is a demo for a uh, game that's gonna come out i think next year if i'm not wrong they have a kickstarter it's gonna be in the description uh, they already reached the gold at this point i'm a little bit late on this but uh we're gonna i'm gonna try it out and if, if you can donate if you can do anything about that well that always helps i'm pretty sure Dearest Micah, do you believe in ghosts? In spirits? I do not. In demons? Maybe. I do. Okay. There's a world right on the edge of your consciousness. But not everyone can see it. Those of us with the sight have a duty to protect, to maintain. I deeply apologize for what I must do. My son. Oh. I love you. Edwin Riley. I was the letter. P.S. Happy birthday, Micah. How I wish I could be spending it with you. And he told me on my birthday about the terrible things that he might have done or not. I don't know. He didn't, he wasn't very clear about that. Okay, it's not voice. Okay, I was, I, was, I was like, oh my god, is this voice? I was so surprised. Maybe the full version is gonna be voice. Huh? Uh, a world away from ghosts, from demons and spirit, was a young man named Mike O'Reilly. Uh, 24 years old, he just recently graduated from the Dynasty Institute, a highly competitive and prestigious university with a diploma in business. That sounds boring. It wasn't his first choice, okay, possibly not even his second. But his uncle was the dean of the business school and his son was one of the lecturers, so it was, was, was expected of him. Okay. It was for free. I would have done it too if it was for free. However, he was able to uh, take some summer classes in art on the condition that he could also hold down a part of them. He chose a local cafe, cozy with chickens, and they fell in love with the place. He used to visit the, uh, this place almost every day. When he started university, the atmosphere helped him think. Mary ran the business side of things, but was also a skilled barista, teaching him how to do ladder art. You are pretty damn good at. Thank you very much. No, okay. I was not. Uh, I was not doubting that. Chef Thomas taught him how to cook and prepare the menu items. He was also the one who encouraged him to enroll in art school. Both he and Mary enthusiastically offering to hire him. A husband and wife duo, and incredible people. Today, though, he had been given the day off. A rare occurrence for the ever conscientious Michael. University was finally done, and he's from the north of Audi. Why would you want? That's kind of weird. <laughs> well, it's a narrator. I guess it's fine. I don't know. It's just weird to see the first and last name at the same time. When you're like telling a story. I think like it's... I don't know. It, maybe it's just me. Let's move in out of the apartment they rented together. He needs to get a new roomie. The building was not special. Just a regular apartment you could find again where. Uh, what made it so appealing was the rent discount that a student could get on the place thanks for the university. But you're not a student anymore. Otherwise, Micah was sure they would have ended up in a shoebox of an apartment. Leon, as Micah called him, was moving to work with his father across town. He wasn't far from the apartment by any means, but this building didn't have parking. As he was starting a new adventure in real estate, he needed somewhere he could keep a car. Wow, he's pretty well off! He was reluctantly moving in, and still he threatened time and time again that he would visit as much as humanly possible. Micah and Leon had known each other since they were kids in kindergarten. Whoa! But it wasn't until they conceded, conceded, coincidentally, ended up living together that they actually became friends. They attended at the same school throughout the years, but were in different classes. They knew each other's faces, but not really who they were. You know how it goes. I do. Whoa, magical box. Somehow it was uh, already moving for Leo. Liam. Uh, the launch. Liam. The launch room was slowly filling up with boxes. Whoa. What is he taking? He's taking a frying pan. 
Like I was still shocked by how much stuff uh, one guy could accrue in four years. Were they not sharing the frying pan? Seriously, chopping action. Leon, Addiction. you ready yet? It'll be dark by the time you manage to tape these up. Okay, this is boys. <laughs> he was seriously procrastinating as per usual. All right, all it's right. So small. I'm going as fast as I can. Or maybe I'm like a lot. Of, I'm very tall. <laughs> tisk tisk. Moving on your best friend's birthday and taking your sweet time doing it. Typical. Typical, Leon. Today was November fifteenth. I thought I was gonna have to remember the dates, like you know, <laughs> like in Amnesia, and I was like, oh my god, am I gonna have to? Am I, I search for the date. Uh, to be my guest twenty fourth birthday. He was actually, he wasn't actually upset about Liam moving today of all days, not really. It wasn't something he ever particularly celebrated after all. I mean, uh, after my father left me that weird ass creepy birthday note, I would be like, no, no more birthdays for me, thank you. He did, however, really enjoy tormenting Leon about it, who was, as it turns out, quite upset about the day. Micah tossed Leon's hair as he walked off with a final box. Surprisingly, he was going straight to work once the movers took all of the boxes, so he was already dressed in his new suit. Okay, that explains it. Because I was like, oh, they, they are, have very different aesthetics and styles. It was quite a sight. A young suited man carrying out boxes that were definitely too heavy for him, while trying to pretend he wasn't on the verge of crying about the whole situation. I didn't pick the moving day. You know how sorry I am. I would much rather stay and celebrate with you my old man was determined that I had to start today. He looks so sad that Mike actually felt a little bit bad for him. He didn't want him to go either, of course. They have fun living together, but it wasn't like they would stop being friends just because they didn't anymore. All right, no need to cry. Seriously, you'll make me cry too. I'm oh. not! He totally undoubtedly was. Did I, I, what the, why did I just say? They spent the rest of the morning sealing boxes and moving them to the front door ready for the movers. It was hard work, considering how many boxes he'd managed to fill. These are big boxes. Okay, they're leaving. Bye, boxes. Oh, no, they're not Catch leaving. Later, they're just closing. Okay. Come by the cafe when you're free next. I wonder when that'll be. Dad's got me booked solid for a month. Don't worry, there's no rush. Anyway, <laughs> that sounds pretty rough. Good luck. Thanks. I think I'm gonna need it. As Leon leaves mid-morning, Micah sighs. At least he gets out of celebrating his birthday this year. Yeah, see, he, he was he was traumatized. Oh, hello. Oh my God. Uh, I doesn't let me again. Okay. I was curious. Leon is typing. But I already had a text! <laughs> did I say happy birthday? You did not. Happy birthday. It's too late, Leon! Okay, you did say it. I'm sorry. You're good. You're good, Leon. I don't know why I'm not reading the text. <laughs> you wanna get fired on your first day. Uh, okay, bye. He's such an idiot! Leo was only slightly younger, but sometimes he has like a lost kid. Any excuse to text or call, he'd take it. It was endearing, it's not, if not a little tiresome occasion. Still, it made Micah smile as he locked his phone, slumping down on the couch. Moving was seriously exhausting, and it wasn't even him who moved. Oh my god, the, the bus disappeared. I, di I didn't even. Maybe he'll take a nap. Take a nap. You deserve it. <laughs> All the time. Oh, what the hell? Sudden roar of thunder and a flash through the sky woke Micah with a start. It was dark, the room was nearly pitch black from the storm, or had he slept all day? He broke his head, he'd been getting some killer headaches lately, and his sleeping pattern was all over the place. With a yawn, he lifted his phone to check the time as he reached over the turn to turn. He reached over the turn on the lamp beside him, squinting as the sudden brightness hit him. Hit his tired eyes. Oh man, oh my god, that is bright! He sighed and slept the whole day. He catch up the messages later, he decided. Micah rubbed his forehead again, trying to calm the headache. He had been having a dream, it seemed so real. But now he couldn't even remember what it was. He's, he's got powers, doesn't he? It was right on the cusp of his mind, but out of reach. So 
normally didn't really celebrate birthdays, but he did have one tradition. Every birthday it would rain without fail. That's uh, that doesn't sound that doesn't sound normal. He would sit by a window listening to his favorite music and sketch. He loved the rain. He was melancholic. One of his earliest memories was playing by the in the rain with his his um someone. I guess his dad. Did he did he erase his memory or something? Who was that again? He ground. He couldn't remember his face. He knew he was a young man playing with him, but he couldn't remember who he was. I bet you 50 bucks it wasn't that. He held onto his head tighter, feeling his headache getting worse. It always got worse when he tried to remember his childhood. All he could remember was that smiling face through a deep haze. It was his dad. He raised his memory. Sometimes it seems so clear. He could almost make out his features. It was his dad. Other times, nothing. Micah got off the coach with an effort on the coming of one of his early 20s and wandering toward the balcony doors. Who does that? I'm in my 20s and I, I'm not able to do that. I just die. Watching the rain outside make him, made him feel calmer. He breathed out on the glass of the doors. He wrote a single word in the bar. A name. Edwin. It was his father! Fellow made by another. Riley. Uh, this name, he was sure it belonged to his father. Okay, okay. <laughs> he was sure that's whose face he saw when he remembered playing in the rain. The name of the letter he kept hidden from his own Caroline. She didn't like any mention of Michael's parents. It seemed like she wasn't very fond of them. Was it my aunt from my... Was it my... Like, it was... Was it his sister? Or... Or, like, from the other side? Like, from my mom's side? Micah, I'm already talking about that. I'm Micah. Micah was raised by his aunt and uncle. They weren't bad people at all, but he never felt like they actually wanted him around. They did what he was told, studied what they wanted to do. They learned to never ever ask about his family. He knew only that his father was his son's brother. Okay, yeah, it's his They answered the question, thank you. The subject was then early on. When he came to live with them, for some unknown reason, he couldn't remember much before then. Just what, just when he awoke in the hospital, his aunt Caroline told him he would be living with her now. He could never see the wretch old man again. She wouldn't tell him who this wretch old man was though, but somehow the thought of not seeing him made him sad, even if he didn't know why. Ah. I suppose I should get back to Leon before he worries. I fell asleep means something horrible has happened. He'll end up coming back over in a panic. He worries too much, honestly. Still, it's nice that he cares so much. The rest of the night was spent chatting to Leon, before he finally dragged himself to his bedroom to sleep once again. That's a nice, that's a nice setup. Oh, uh, Grogi Micah awakens from his restless slumber. I, I woke up in, in the corner of my room. I did not woke up in the, in the bed. That's not something I did. Another night where he felt as if he barely slept. Those headaches were getting worse. He was back at work today, glad for the distraction. He wasn't much of a fan of having too much time to think all along here. Sooner or later, he'd have to face his sound and the business career she wanted for him. She didn't know what he wanted to do, really. He was happy for now at the cafe. The cafe was locally famous for his delicious food and created latte art. One thing he in particular was known for was drawing cartoon cats and rabbits on a kid's meal in sauce. It was definitely popular with the children. It could be kind of fun to run his own kitchen one day, he thought to himself. As he was thinking, he was dressing. He liked the uniform from Merriment Cafe too. Comfortable, but also pretty stylish. Where is my uniform? Somebody was already time to get going since he... Please tell me that they're gonna give me the uniform like <laughs> in the full version. So he had to ride his bike to work, he'd usually get changed in the staff byron when he got there. Quickly he got his uniform bag and headed for the door. Wow, those, those bags boss. are clean! Morning boss! Oh, what? I'm sorry. Oh! Yeah, I'm sorry. And a fabulous morning to you as well, Micah. I'm gonna head out back and change. I'll be right back. Sure thing. Oh, Micah! While you're out there, will you remind Thomas to check on the new blend, please? Yep. I got you. The morning was busy as usual. Regulars and new visitors alike. Michael was a popular server, and he had customers who came in just to see him. Mary 
found it amusing, to say the least. She could regularly call him their poster boy. Did, 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 did they actually put posters? Is that is that a thing? They can, I would love to see that. He found it incredibly embarrassing. He didn't do anything special. He just liked making art on food and seeing people's faces when they saw Hey, man. Can I get a double caramel latte, please? Leon, we just, we just talked. With extra sprinkles? Yeah. Hey, wait! <laughs> I thought you were slammed for the whole month. <sighs> you got a break soon? I've got a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I finish in a couple of minutes, actually. <laughs> Excellent timing, as always. This is a nice uniform. <laughs> yeah, right. Like you didn't already know that. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? That'll be three ninety-five, sir. Uh, Sir? Earth to Leon? You gonna pay for your sugar attack or just stand there like a space cadet? Uh, it, I didn't read yeah. that. Sorry. Grab a table and I'll bring it over to you when it's ready. The, 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 that conversation was just... It, it was too much for me. I was so concentrated. I was so into it. I was like, oh, perhaps? <laughs> yeah, thanks. You're welcome. They paid for his ring and sat down at the table as directed. Looks so awkward waiting. Micah couldn't help but wonder what was up with him. Was work that rough just? Okay, break time. Like, literally he said that he was back for like a month, right? That he, he was not gonna be able to hang out for a long time. And uh, and he was there like literally the next day. Like, what the hell? Leon, calm down, please. Are you lying to me, Leon? Hey, uh, never mind. Uh, Leon, are you okay? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. Uh, don't worry about me. You sure? Nothing's up. Mhm. Mm That's strange. It's so, how did the job go yesterday? He looks so happy about it. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. He broke up us. Found something he could talk Dad about. assigned me to this weird old place on the outskirts. The outskirts? Didn't know anything was out there. Yep. Out near the haunted forest you love so much. What? Uh, no, I don't. Oh my god, the stuttering in this man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know you're a big Freddy cat when it comes to ghosts. <laughs> His knees at the work cut and pull a disapproving face. <laughs> That's what you get. So allergic to cats, even mentioning what makes his knees less sad existence. Seriously, though, the old man is really fixated on this place. Why is that? That's the thing. I don't know. He knows something. He knows something that we don't. I went there to check it out, but it just looks like an abandoned building on a lot of land. Nothing particularly special. I bet his dad is like that kind of people, that kind of person that, uh, Knows everything and knows that there's something medical or weird over there, and they're like, "Oh yeah, uh, I'm gonna send my son that knows nothing about it, and I'm I, I'll let him figure it out. He's gonna figure it out." Old buildings get sold all the time. He probably just thinks it's an easy sell for the newbie. I don't know that. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's just some more until Micah's break is over. The worst flow easily just as they always have between them. As Leon stands to leave, he suddenly turns back to face Micah. Oh, by the way, shoot me a text when you clock out. I have some time tonight. We should grab dinner for your birthday, since we couldn't yesterday. <sighs> and here I thought I escaped the celebrations. Micah. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll text you. No need to make that face. Leon Grenin responds and walk out of the cafe with a carefree wave. With yet another side, Micah shook his head and smiled to himself, to himself before getting back to work. The ship passed by quickly after that. A steady stream of customers kept Micah busy enough that time seemed to fly, just how he liked it. He glanced up at the clock, knock of time already. Knock of time already. A moment later, and he changed back out of his uniform and prepared to leave. It was an end, no, it was really. He dug his hand into his pocket, searching for his phone to text Leon. But nothing was there. With a frown, he checked his other pocket. Not there oh, either. Shit. Great. This is just great. 
What I could have done. Rush back into the staff room and scan over the area. Nothing. It was nowhere in sight. Then somewhere in the cafe, could he have fallen out, out of his pockets? Ten minutes later, he rubbed at his temples. Wasn't anywhere. Did he even had it with him this morning? Maybe he left it behind? Smile embraced with possibilities. He rushed out of the cafe door, scowling out uh, with a hasty goodbye to Mary. He grabbed his bike to quickly get home. He pedaled hard, desperately hoping he simply left it behind and didn't lose it on the right end. It would have been such a huge pain to have lost it for real. Even disregarding the cost of a new phone, he would have already lost everything he kept on it. The ride home was stressful. Everything that could get in his way did. How come only when he was in a rush did people feel like suddenly appearing in front of his bike? When he finally got back to the apartment and found in, uh, when he finally got back to the apartment and found it sitting on the end of the, his bed under his nightshirt, he was too exhausted to want to do anything. Relief washed over him as he flopped down on his bed and absolutely mindless scrolled through his notification. Drug mail, social media nonsense, a million texts from a million, and a missed call from an unknown number. Huh, weird. Wonder who that was. Don't usually get many calls. Even more surprisingly, they left no message. He stared at the number for a moment before curiosity got the better of him and he searched up the number. Lawyer? What? He screwed up his face, suddenly confused. Maybe they got the wrong number? What would a lawyer want with me? He looked up at the page for a little while longer. For a while longer, why did I add that? Trying to decide what to do. Should he call them back? They didn't leave any message, so, so maybe it was the wrong number after all? Call him back! He scrolled through the rest of his missed notifications as he read him through all of Leon's message. Make his 37 message stream of text shorts. It seemed as if he spent some more time dealing with that rural property since he left the cafe. His dad really wanted it by the sound of it. Finally, he was all caught up. He then fell back. He promised Liam he would test him as soon as his ship finished. But that became a little difficult to do without his mom. I mean, just tell him. He seems like a nice guy. Like I was still thinking about the miss call too. Absolutely swirling through nothing as he stared aimlessly at his device. Call them. Uh, no. <laughs> These are both good options, Leon, my friend. But I want to know the mystery number. Um, uh, the fun thing to do would be to call the mystery number. But the right thing to do will be to call Leon, right? How are we feeling? Are we feeling like doing the right thing or doing the fun thing? Like, I'm not sure. Okay, let's just call... I, whatever I decide, I'm gonna regret it. So, I'm gonna call the mister... I'm gonna call... Uh, I'm gonna call Leon. Yeah, that's the right thing to do. That's the right thing to do. Mega quickly opening his contacts, contacts list, scrolling down to the endless list of names to find Leon. How many friends do you have? Not, he actually didn't have many people there. Oh, okay. He saw an uncle, the cafe, Leon, and a few others he was friendly enough with, but never actually tested. He stopped at Leon's name, he did promise to let me know when he was finished work. But just a little later than expected, still he gave his promise. But what the hell? So my goal was to kill the guy he sworn and started boss. He jumped in and surprised, nearly dropping his phone. Barely catching it, he caught sight of the color ID. It was the same number, the mystery number! But this time, he was available to answer it. He rushed to his desk where he kept his notebook just in case. How do I get to answer? Uh, hello? Hi, it's Kiso102 here. Uh, thank you very much for watching the first episode of the demo of The In Between. I just wanted to encourage you to go and check the Kickstarter. Uh, they already met their goal, but there's, I'm pretty sure that you can still donate and try some of the perks. There are a ton of perks that you can get, and there is a lot of nice content that you can get if you donate a certain quantity of, of money. So I super encourage you to go there. I'm, uh, the game was great, and I hope that you stay full the full playthrough of the of the game. Okay, of the demo. Sorry. I will see you in the next one then. Uh, have a nice one. Bye-bye.